this video is about um, trying to explain uh, idols uh, according to the Bible, according to the scripture. Graven images, idols, um, and how God feels about them. So, before I start, I just want to say that I have very, very good, um, I can relate, let me say that, to how we feel about things like the cross, right? Um, when I first became a believer, I got this tattooed on me. I drew crosses everywhere, and uh, and I it meant something to me, you know? And, but I didn't know the scripture. I didn't know how it made God feel. And uh, so when he revealed it to me, it was pretty difficult, actually. But um, my whole point in, in these videos that I'm about to be making, and I might put these on my YouTube channel, but these are mainly for a friend of mine. And, and for anybody else who uh, wants to learn about this or study it, okay? At least study it. That's all I ask. That's all I can ask with anything out of the scripture that I might try to lead you to. Um, if I say something about scripture, usually I have studied it very, very thoroughly. I and I made up my mind based on the scripture, even if I didn't like it. Um, so... I'm going to try and keep some of these videos pretty short. I'm going to, there are many, many, many scriptures um, that I can share on this. Um, and we can take this study very, very deep. Um, I have been, re it has been revealed to me um, who the beast is that is talked about in Revelation chapter 13. Um, it has also been revealed to me by our Father who or what the image that of the beast is, right? There's an image that represents the beast. And I'll show you through scripture how we can define what that image is. It's actually really simple. And, uh, but please understand when I talk about the cross that I understand 100%. I, I'm not, it's not like I'm like, oh, you're just... Why would you even think that? No, like, I get it, okay? I was there. I am, like I said, I have it tattooed on my arm. I hopefully one day soon will have enough money to get it lasered off. It's the only tattoo that I want to get rid of. So, I'm not without um, empathy here. And I'm not trying to judge anybody. All I'm trying to do is to show you that God absolutely, according to the scripture, despises things that are made with the hands of men that we say represent him. That's just, it's, it's, and that's the, that's my plan here. So the first scripture that I'm going to show on this. And I pray, you know, um, I know this will be difficult for some people. If you decide that, like I did, that the cross will have, no longer have a place in your relationship with God. That's what I did. Um, and I literally threw everything that I had that had a cross on, in, on it um, in the fire. I made that video. I posted it on my YouTube channel. And I didn't enjoy it, but it was... Uh, freeing and let me tell you god has blessed me so i am not against the preaching of the cross i can show you through scripture that that is very valid of course we preach the cross we preach christ and him crucified that is the power that preaching of the cross um so pick up your cross and follow me he said there's tons of scripture where we, we preach about the cross okay The message of the cross is very good. It is simply the fact of building one out of our hands and then putting it in our place of worship. God hates that. Believe me, I'm going to show you. Well, you don't have to believe me. I'm going to show you through the scripture. So 
The first scripture we're going to talk about is the second commandment, which is given in the Old Testament. Now, don't, don't get ahead of yourself. I'm going to show you New Testament scriptures and Old Testament scriptures about this. Because idolatry is a thing all the way through the Bible. And the, the oldest form, the most pure, obvious form of idolatry is graven images, idols, things that you can hold in your hands. They're tangible. We're going to get the definition of them right here. Um, this book that I have right here, this is the Strong's Complete Word Study Concordance. This goes with the King James Bible. Now, I want to explain something real quick. I don't care what version you use. What version of the scriptures you want to use to do this study with me. I, I read the King James. I know why I read the King James, actually. And it's not just because I feel like it's good, okay? I read the King James because it is a word-for-word -word translation. Each word was taken from the Greek word. And you can find that in this book called the Strong's Concordance. That way you can get the actual Hebrew definition for the Old Testament, Greek definition for the New Testament. Um, there are several different word-for-word -word translations, like the NASB, the King James, the New King James. The um, There are several. There are ones that are not word-for-word -word translations, okay? I myself don't choose to read them, but I'm not going to judge you for if you want to if you want to study the scriptures out of those. Uh, that's between you and God. Uh, yeah. So I will say words might sound a little different sometimes in those. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, the reason that I don't study the NIV or the NLT anymore. I've read plenty of the NLT, New Living Translation, and I know what the NIV is. I've read some of that. And I was blessed. I I, I didn't, you know, uh, I found it a blessing. So uh, whatever you want to study with is fine. But the reason um, that I don't use those two Bibles is because they are what are called a thought-for-thought thought translation. Instead of each word being translated to this word, this word goes to this word, this word, this word, right? No, that's not how it works in a um, thought for thought translation. A thought for thought is like, oh, we think it's saying this, so we're going to translate that whole thought to say this. I mean, most of it's pretty pretty good, but um, you can't trace the words then. It's, it's not nearly as easy. I'm sure they have some sort of concordances or whatever, but... Um, it's a thought for thought translation and we know that when men start thinking that it says a certain thing and then they translate it by what they think it says instead of translating this word to this word. Anyways, so that's why I don't choose to use those Bibles. You can use them. It's, I'm, I, I won't tell you. The best version of the Bible is the one that you actually read. <laughs> so anyways. I didn't want to make this video too long. This was an introduction, first video uh, according about this. I can probably make a ton of them, but I'm going to try to keep most of them under like 10 minutes. This one might go closer to 20. I'm going to try to keep it quick. So I'm going to read the scripture. This is the second commandment. Uh, you can find it in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4. Okay. You can also find it in Deuteronomy chapter 5, I believe. Uh, the Ten Commandments. So, Exodus chapter 20, verse 4, it says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Okay. Let's, let's break this scripture down real quick. These are three uh, verses, four, five, and six. It starts out, very first thing it says, Thou shalt not make 
onto the any graven image. Boom. Do not make it. So, of anything that's in heaven, anything that's in the earth, or anything that's in the sea under the earth, do not make them. That's the commandment, okay? I'll have you know that uh, if you start studying Catholic catechism, they take that commandment out. That's why they worship things like statues of Mary. They actually worship the cross. They kiss it. They do all kinds of stuff, okay? I just wanted to put that in there because later on I'll be talking about the image of the beast. And I can show you that it is the cross. The image that the world worships, that they get cast into the lake of fire for, is the crucifix. It's the cross. God told me this through the Holy Ghost last year. And I can, I can, scripture upon scripture, line upon line, I can show you. Uh, very, very, very serious stuff. This is a serious, serious topic. Okay? Uh, I will eventually make a video, but you know what happened in Exodus. When, uh, right after God gave these commandments, uh, I think it's in the next chapter, they were worshiping a golden calf that they had, that Aaron had made in the fire. It doesn't matter what the image is. It's an image made with the hands of men. Now I'm going to give you the definition. And those people that worship that image were killed. They were put to death. God says in his commandment here, he says, For I, the Lord thy God, he said, don't make these things. I'm a jealous God. Why, why would he say that? Why would he say, I'm a jealous God? When you make a, um, here we go, this, is, this will work right here. When you make something, okay, like this here, uh, this was given to me by uh, one of my friend's kids, so I have it. <laughs> Anyways, this is like a McDonald's toy. So, <coughs> this was made with the hands of men. It is an image of something in the earth. Well, whatever, not really. But you get what I'm saying. It was the image of a character in a movie, whatever. But it's this is a graven image. Graven, made with your hands. You're graven it. So if I take this and I say that this represents God, I put it on the top of the altar. God is 100% against that. That is what he gets jealous of. This isn't God. Our God is real. He's the one true God. He is spirit, and those who worship him must do it in spirit and in truth. You know what? Christ said that, right? So, when we take this thing, and we somehow say that this looks... This reminds me of God. Well, God says that makes him jealous. When we make an image. Now, it's not like, oh, if you were a sculptor and you make some image, God's going to hate you. No, you're like an artist. It doesn't, you're not saying that that image represents God. You don't put it on the altar. You don't put it inside the place of worship. So, I mean... That's the second commandment. Um, this video will be a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. So it says, don't make any graven image. Now, when you look this up in the NIV, this will say, don't make any image. Okay. Um, but most versions, I believe, say graven image. And some might even say idol. So idols is in the New Testament, you will find that idols is the translation, the word that they used in translation of the New Testament. New Testament was originally in Greek. But so, idols and graven images, exact same thing. Only one, there's a slight difference. A graven image is only one thing. A graven image is something made, it's tangible, 
by the hands of men. That's a graven image. A um, An idol, graven image is in that definition, but also an idol can be many other things. So, that's the only other difference. Otherwise, many times the term graven image is translated to idol. So you have to look at what it's talking about. But in this Strong's Concordance, the word graven from uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4, the, the Strong's number is... 6459 in the Strong's Concordance, 6459 in the Hebrew. And I'm going to read it just so you have a definition of the word graven. 6459. Um, okay, here it is. The word <coughs> is pesel in Hebrew. From 6458, an idol carved. Graven image. A noun meaning idol, a graven image. This word comes from the verb pasal, meaning to hew or to cut, which was done to create an idol. In the law of the Old Testament, the Lord forbade Israel to create such images. So if you if you hewed something, like a piece of wood, into an idol that you say represents God. That is the exact definition of graven. Okay, uh, and there's more. I'll read the whole thing. It said, the Lord forbade Israel to create such images, Exodus 20, verse 4, Leviticus 26, verse 1, Deuteronomy 5, verse 8. That's where you'll find the commandments again. For they were an abomination unto him. These things that you carve... They're an abomination unto him. That You can find that. Deuteronomy 27.15, it will tell you that graven images are an abomination unto God. The word abomination means a detestable thing. Something that just he just detests. He just dis, it disgusts him. Abomination is also a disgusting act in God's eyes. So he says... To grave an image is an abomination. And these are all things, these are why I really looked into. And this is Old Testament stuff, right? Some people be like, oh, we don't listen to the Old Testament. Well, let me tell you, if God hated it before, if he said it was a detestable abomination before, God never changes. We know that from the New Testament. So if he never changes, he doesn't like them still to this day. He hates Images. That's another scripture you will find. It says he hates graven images. It literally says in the Bible, God hates them. Okay. Um, it says here, those who served idols would be ashamed in the judgment. Psalms 97, 7, Isaiah 42, 17. And the Lord would cut them off from him. Um. In a that's uh naming or whatever 114. The presence of these idols were indicative of the sin and rebellion of the people. Okay, Deuteronomy 4 16, 23, 25, 2 Chronicles 33 7. The prophets often demonstrated the folly of these idols, they were profitable for nothing. Having a graven image. Saying it represents God is profitable for nothing, and there will be judgment. That's what this is saying. That's what the Bible teaches. Isaiah 44.10, Habakkuk 2.18. They could easily be burned. These things have no power. They're not. The only power that they have is to cause you to sin. Okay, it says, and they could not save. They had no breath. Jeremiah 10, 14, Isaiah 45, 20. Idols could be made of metal, um, wood, and it gives scriptures to find those, or possibly stone. So idols would be made of these things. So that is the word graven.
okay? That's just the definition from the Strong's Concordance of the word graven. I'm going to give you the definition of the word image. It was graven image. So the definition of the word image is Strong's number 6754 in the Hebrew. 6754, and let's see what it says. Okay. Salem. T S E H or T S E L E M. Salem. That is the Hebrew word for image. <coughs> right? Six, seven, five, four. Salem. It says, from an unused root, meaning to shade, a phantom i.e. figurative illusion, resemblance, hence a representative figure, especially an idol, image, vain show. It's a vain show. Vain meaning waste of time, worthless. So if you have a, an image that you say represents God, it says it's a, a vain show. So... Let's just read the rest of it, and then I will conclude this video. Um, it says, a masculine noun meaning an image, a likeness, a statue, a model, a drawing, a shadow. The word means image or likeness. It's most celebrated theological an anthropological, anthropological, anthropological use was to depict human beings as made in God's own image. Okay. People continue to be in his image even after the fall, although the image is marred and still serves as the basis of the prohibition not to kill human beings because we're created in God's image image his likeness that's what the word image is about it is used metaphorically <coughs> to depict persons as shadows phantoms or unknowing senseless fleeting beings carrying out the motions of life unless they have hope in god in a similar vein the wicked before the lord are considered as mere dreams or fantasies the word is also used in a concrete sense to depict images cut out of or molded from various materials. Now that's where we're talking. The word describes the images or idols of foreign or strange gods. 2 Kings 11.18, um, Amos 5.26. <coughs> The people of Israel produced images used as idols from their own jewelry. Ezekiel 7.20, 16.17 Israel was on its entrance into Canaan to destroy all the molten images of the heathen. Okay. In Ezekiel 23.14, 23, this word refers to pictures of Babylonians that enticed the people of Israel into apostasy and they saw them. So they enticed the people into apostasy. The people, the Babylonians did that. Why did they do that? So they could overcome them. They, they enticed them by getting them to be a part of their graven images. So that is going to conclude this video. I just wanted to um, start <coughs> talking about the cross. In any image, you can put the six-pointed star that's on the on all the Jewish temples. Same, same concept, same principle. God hates it. Believe me. <coughs> so, um, there you have that. We now just discussed what the commandment is. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or bow down and worship it. First thing he says, don't even make one. Then he says, don't bow down nor serve them nor worship them. 
Okay, so it, then we talked about um, a couple other things and the definition of the words graven image. So God bless you. Um, I'm praying that whoever sees this video, uh, especially my friend and companion, co-worker, my boss, <laughs> that, uh, that you, anybody who sees this can take this with um, some humility. Take this with, this is about learning. If you think that you already know how you're going to respond to this teaching, if you already are like, ah, I'm not going to listen, then you're not going to listen. And I personally, I, it's not about listening to me. I wish I didn't know this, <laughs> kind of, because it's a really difficult thing to watch people um, involve themselves with graven images when I know what the scripture says, especially people that I know are really wanting to follow God, really wanting to change their lives and follow God, which I believe you are. So, and, uh, and I'm all about that. So there's much more about this graven images thing. Um, I just wanted to give the commandment and the definition of what a graven image is. And I will send other videos after this. This one will probably be the longest video. I'm going to try to make them all really short, single point videos. We'll even get into some history as to where the cross came from. So, God bless you. I love you. Um, I'm praying for you. And uh, study these things out. Read the scripture. And uh, be humble. I don't know everything. I didn't know before God taught me this, any of this. This is all shown to me through the Holy Ghost from our Father in the name of Jesus. So, and in that name, God bless you. Take care. Bye for now.